uh, a few uh, bluefish fillets that I caught a few days ago up in Chesapeake Bay. Now, this is a recipe that's better suited, uh, actually it's quite good for large bluefish. And if you've got fresh bluefish, I've said here many times before, bluefish is not my favorite fish by any means, and it is not, and particularly the big ones. Now, I like the little ones fresh out of the water. I like them salted down for the winter time. Uh, then I think they're great. But when they get up five, six, seven, eight pounds, and then those 12 and 15 pounders, and they get on up in that size, I'll eat one on a charcoal grill or cook this way that I'm going to bake today. I can handle that, but it's really not my favorite fish. But it's, uh, this recipe is for other oily fish, too, that are not really quite as strong as the large blue fish. It's fine for Spanish mackerel. It's fine for speckled trout or gray trout, any oily fish like that. Not particularly recommended for a white meat fish like flounder or something of that sort, although it would be good that way, uh, I suppose. But anyway, what I've got is my... Uh, fillets here and I'm going to put them in the pan where I have the aluminum foil and just a few simple ingredients as I said we'll salt and pepper them now I oil that uh, or, or buttered rather lightly buttered the foil and I always do that keep it from uh, sticking these are unskinned fillets I just turn them skin side down and first I salt and pepper them sort of to taste don't overdo the salt to start with because you can always add it later and it's awful hard to get out if you go too much uh, to begin with. And a little minced instant onion, just a spoon or two, depending on how much. The recipe uh, there you can just see, just, you know, however much you think you want. But this goes fine with an oily fish like this. And a little mayonnaise. And I had a tablespoon, there it is. I knew I had a tablespoon around here somewhere. Take a little mayonnaise, a tablespoon or two, and uh, kind of dollop it on the fish and spread it out. So you've got a real thin coat, like so. And then we put a little paprika on it. Now the oven is preheated to 350 degrees. And we'll cook it like this in the foil. I'm gonna close the foil up, just sort of loosely, a kind of a tent. And we'll cook it in the foil, uh, depending on the thickness. And these are small fillets. These, these are my size uh, eating bluefish. I like this size. And uh, I'll cook them about 20 minutes, maybe only about 15. I'll look at them, but I'll get a chance, I think, before the end of the show. But sort of tin it up sort of loosely, and we'll bake them in there. Now, real big, thick, heavy bluefish at 350 degrees, you need to bake for about 30, 35 minutes, maybe even 40 if it's a real, sure enough, a big 15 or 18 pounder. But we'll steam this in there, sort of, bake this in there for uh, 15 minutes or 18 minutes or something like that. Then I'll open it up and let it brown. Oh, that's what I'm trying to say. We'll come back to it later and uh, open it up and give it a chance to kind of brown on top. But that's a very good, simple, easy recipe for bluefish. We're not going blue fishing today, although we did catch one or two up on Delaware Bay. But I've never fished Delaware Bay before. That's that big body of water that separates the state of Delaware from the southern tip of New Jersey, and uh, the trout and the flounder were hitting up there quite well this early summer, and I was up there a few days ago, and I'm gonna take you and show you that after these very important messages. Bradford. Joel Gottlieb of Workshop Theater is with us to tell us about a very exciting season of entertainment beginning in September. Joel, what's going to be happening at Workshop with the 85-86 season? Well, we kick off the season on August 25th with the annual membership party. Uh, this party is for season ticket holders and tickets can be purchased at the party. The uh, party will be at the theater, uh, live entertainment, music, refreshments, and a chance to see the theater and behind stage, backstage. You have five productions coming up in the new season. Yes. Tell us a little about those. Uh, we have five regular plus one special production this season. Night Mother opens in September, followed by romantic comedy. Then we go to our special non-regular season play of Mame. Uh, from there, uh, another comedy, Hot L Baltimore, uh, followed by Pearly, an all-black musical, followed after that by uh, Painting Churches, which is a Golden Pond-type comic drama concluding the season. You have uh, special categories for memberships, and I believe they're all very, very reasonable. Well, 
the regular adult season ticket is $25. Senior citizens, students, and military, $22.5. We also have patron categories, uh, benefactors, business benefactors, and angel categories, which permit uh, one to contribute some additional funds, and their names will be published in the in the program. And for those of you who would like more ticket information about Workshop Theater's 1985-86 season, you can call 799-4876. Joel Gottlieb, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Delaware is our second smallest state. It's on the Delmarva Peninsula, uh, that great goose country and fishing country that I have come to learn and love so much in the last uh, few years that we've been going up there since we've been on the air in Salisbury, Maryland. Uh, we're on Channel 16 up there among 22 other stations uh, that we are carried uh, here on the show. But uh, you, you get to, when you travel, some of the big states like we're accustomed to traveling in the territory, Georgia and South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and where you've got some reach, some distances there, it's like 650 miles from one end of North Carolina to the other. When you go into Delaware, uh, you're kind of surprised to find that it's about 100 miles long and 30, 35 miles wide, roughly uh, like that, it has three counties. And when we went on the air in Salisbury, all of a sudden I started getting all this mail from Delaware. And I had to go look up the map to, to, to tell you the truth, to find out exactly where Delaware was. I couldn't figure where, how we were getting into Delaware and where we were going into Delaware. But we've made a lot of friends up there, and I was up there on a hunt this past winter. Recently, I was back up there. I was at a show in Dover, and I had the chance to go down and fish Delaware Bay. Now, Delaware Bay, as I say, is that large body of water. It's not as big as Chesapeake Bay, but it's a big bay that separates Delaware itself from New Jersey over on the other side. And to me, being in Delaware, Maryland, uh, and Virginia, even up on the Delmarva Peninsula, that's being in Southern Sportsman country. When you get over into New Jersey, uh, by my book, by my definition, that's getting into Yankee land. But Delaware Bay is a fabulous place to go fishing, and the trout fishing up there has been very good so far this year. Now, I only had one morning to go down there, and I'm gonna take you down now to the Cedar Creek Bait and Tackle Shop, which is run by Sam Sheets and his wife, Donna. And I was invited to come down. This is Sam, and you'll see Donna here. I had not met them before, but a friend of mine, Scorchy Tawes, who's on the staff at WBOC in Salisbury, set this trip up for me. And I said, I'd like to go down and do some Delaware filming. Now, Cedar Creek boat launching area is not what we're accustomed to in Southern Sportsman territory. They have eight ramps there. The parking lot will hold 300 automobiles with boat trailers behind them. And on this Sunday morning that we were there and the fish were biting and everything else, they overflowed. They were parking out on the highway along both sides of the road out there because they filled that parking lot up. We're used to seeing one or at most two ramps and maybe parking area for 20, 25 cars to us on Car Lake or Lake Norman or somewhere like that. Uh, Wildlife Resources Commission boat launching ramps that they put up. Uh, that's a large ramp. But this thing here is built to serve a great metropolitan area. Now here we're going out Miss Pillion River entrance, uh, Miss Pillion Inlet, and uh, the Miss Pillion Lighthouse uh, that you saw there guards the river. Miss Pillion River flows through Milford, Delaware, and into Delaware Bay at the point we are here. Now all that film was shot when we came in in the morning because when we went out it was six o'clock in the morning and you can see how foggy it was and we couldn't find the fishing grounds. We ran out and we were close to it our guide is uh, Pappy Bookter. He's the skipper of the charter boat we're on, and I'm fishing with Donna Sheets. Her husband, Sam, let her off for the morning to go, and I know he was busy because he had 350 boats and trailers right outside of his shop there. And we were not on the grounds where we wanted to get because of the fog. We could only see about 200 yards, so we were just drifting and trying pot luck, and this is one of the first things uh, that jumped into our pot. This is what I call the Chinese flounder. It's a stingray. And we disposed of him right over the side. We didn't want him, but almost instantly she got a nice trout. Now they pull this trout in, and it weighs about three pounds, and Pappy was very disgusted. He said, oh shucks, we're in the little trout. And I said, what do you mean the little trout? Where I come from, that is a big trout. He said, we have been catching nine, 10, 11, and 12 pound trout out here just routinely. 
with no problem at all, but he says later in the summer, the small ones start to show up for some reason. The big ones go back to the ocean. And so we were in the small trout run. Now, friends and neighbors, those of you who are from South Carolina and North Carolina and are accustomed to bragging about a four or five pound gray trout and where the citation size is six pounds, this is a big trout. But to these folks up in Delaware, these are runts. Uh, they look upon them as sort of, this is just what you get to do when you haven't got anything else to do. So you may as well catch the little ones. But to me, they're nice, beautiful fish. Now we were using double dropper rigs with uh, bucktails, <coughs> hair lures with a large hook in them, and a strip of squid. And sometimes on top of that, if, particularly if they thought we were gonna fish for flounder, get over a flounder area, they'd put a live minnow on with the squid and the bucktail. I mean, it would really make a, a choice fish sandwich, the way they'd rig it up. And just bump it along the bottom. Now we caught, we lucked into two or three trout, uh, or four trout until the fog lifted, and occasionally while that fog was in there real thick, we could see a boat in the distance. It's beginning to lift here. When we first got out in the morning, we could see maybe 150, 200 yards. And a boat would drift near us and then out of sight again in the fog, and I thought, well, there must be eight or 10, 12 boats out here. When the fog finally lifted, I looked around me, and I counted 84 boats. That'll give you a rough idea. We are on a place called uh, the Coral Beds, which is off uh, a little resort area on Delaware Bay called Slaughter Beach. And here's one of the few bluefish that we caught. And later on, after the fog lifted and it began to lighten up some, we began to pick up a, a few flounder, and we got some nice flounder. But mostly we were getting trout. And as I say, these are the babies up there, so I think Donna lost one there. They do get off. They call them weak fish because they have a tender mouth, not because there's anything weak about the way they fight on the tackle. But there's a, a look at the bucktail and a strip of the squid that we were using. And as I say, if we thought flounder were in the vicinity, every once in a while we put on a live minna with the squid. That was a good fisherman has a good touch. Most women do that really love to fish. They have a good touch. They can feel a fish biting better. Now, this is a legal size. There's a size limit as there is in, in most states on the flounder, but they still would have thrown him back. He was kind of small, although he was legal, but he got the hook down a little too deep, and we kept him uh, simply because he was, uh, uh, he, he wouldn't have survived if we'd thrown him back. So we kept him, but he was above the legal size. But normally they throw back anything in the way of flounder up there that's, uh, that's under 14 or 15 inches. A lot of people just impose their own 15 inch limit. Some states have 11 inch limits, some have 12 inches. But I know a lot of guys that if the flounder's not at least 15 inches, they'll throw him back. They don't want him because there are plenty of the larger ones out there. But these are nice trout by anybody's definition. I really enjoyed going out there, and I caught some myself. I shot this film, and then I started fishing myself. And we caught a nice mess of fish there, including uh, we had four flounders that we kept. I think this one we threw back. But uh, we had some that go two, two and a half, three pounds. But it sometimes happens when you're out there. Now the fog is beginning to lift, and we're beginning to see the, the flotilla uh, out there that surrounded us. But Delaware, of course, is very near within just a couple of hours of some big metropolitan areas, not just New Jersey across the bay, but Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, D.C. are all up through there, as well as a lot of uh, other towns not that big, but still considerable metropolitan areas, Wilmington, Delaware, Dover, places like that. And they need uh, boat ramps with eight and 10 and 12 lanes so you can launch that many boats at once and take them out at once so you don't have too much congestion and they need parking areas for, for 300 uh, boats and trailers. Uh, that's our trip to Delaware Bay. I'm gonna show you a remarkable uh, young lady athlete in just a minute, uh, but first please pay attention to these very important messages. I always have my spice box for each Southern Sportsman taping because a lot of my recipes call for seasoning, but here's a product that does away with choosing the right seasonings. House Autry Seafood Breader Mix. 
It has all the ingredients, milk, eggs, flour, cracker meal, and the spices. When the fish comes out of the shaker bag, it's ready to fry. Folks all over the South are using this House Autry seafood breader mix. Try it if you want really mouth-watering fried fish. From House Autry Mills, Newton Grove, North Carolina. This is my partner at the Southern Sportsman Restaurants, Bobby Carraway. What are you cooking? I'm making a hangtown fried. What about you? Fried quail. You could have made the trout Delmonico. Well, you could have cooked spicy broiled trout. Well, you could have fixed the baked rabbit supreme. Well, you could have cooked shrimp thermidor. The fried frog legs. You could have cooked sweet and sour duck. The clam stuffed mushrooms. Merry old soul. The seafood plant. Food at the fried southern sportsman restaurants France, is worth garlic, arguing about. Steak. When are you going to cook venison stew? In my hometown of Greenville, North Carolina, there's a place called Overton's. Overton's is the world's largest water sports dealer, and this is their 1985 discount catalog. Anything and everything that the boater will need is in this book. Whether it's water skis or life vests, fishing tackles, shotguns, or crossbows, Overton's in Greenville has it at discount prices. Call them today toll-free for your new free catalog, or stop by when you're in Greenville. The prices and selections are super. Tell them Frank sent you. What's so different about the Happy Jack 3X flea collar? It works. Manufacturers of animal health products for over 38 years, Happy Jack has achieved a dramatic breakthrough in canine preventive health care. The Happy Jack 3X flea collar contains a completely new active ingredient which kills fleas for 11 months, ticks for 7 months, and mange mites. Protect your dog and home year-round with the Happy Jack 3X collar. Save an expensive trip to the animal clinic and a costly visit from the exterminator. Ask for Happy Jack. <coughs> your dog would. Uh, recently, I had the pleasure of meeting one of the most remarkable young lady athletes that I've ever met. I'm talking about professional athletes. She's a water skier, and she happens to be from Greenville, North Carolina. And I had heard of her, but I just never had the opportunity to meet her. Her father, Parker Overton, said, come out to the house. They have a lake and a little summer house out in the country there from Greenville. He said, come on out. And so I went out, and she was rehearsing. They have their own water ski lake set up out there. And she was practicing on water skis. And when I saw her and how she could perform on water skis, I said, I want to do a story on this young lady. Now, this is her mother, Becky Overton. And when I went out there that afternoon, the wind was up. Uh, it was cloudy, and it was a little northeaster blowing, and the wind was kind of choppy. She was practicing the slalom. But the slalom is where a boat runs a straight course. Now, they're just lining up on the course here, but it runs a straight course, and there are buoys out on every side. And she goes back and forth and goes around those buoys. They're just floating balls that are in the water. If she makes uh, the six buoys properly, then they shorten the rope, and they keep shortening the rope until finally there's just barely, maybe one inch or, or less, to go around the slalom. And you find yourself, you're going to see here in a minute, she's lying down. And occasionally, in particular, if the water's a little choppy, as I say, she's just rehearsing here. She's just practicing. Uh, but she made those six buoys, and so they shorten it up, the rope, and they keep making the rope shorter and shorter and shorter until finally you can just reach the buoy and no more. You've just got room enough to go around. And what you do in competition, now, she is a three-time national champion, including this current year. Uh, and... This is one of the things she does. She also does trick skiing. I'm going to show you here in just a minute. Uh, this is shot in slow motion to give you a little bit better idea uh, of what it's like to do this slalom. But they keep shortening the rope up until you just can't go anymore. And her shoulder hit there. She hit a little patch of rough water that the wind was breezing it up, and her shoulder dug in, and uh, that's water skiing. And if that happens to you in competition, if you have the bad luck and the water gets up there, uh, and uh, uh, gives you uh, cause to fall, uh, that's just too bad in the competition. Now, she's going to give a little water skiing lesson here. She's a very good instructor, and uh, water skiing is not all that hard to pick up. Now, when you get into the level that she competes uh, in the slalom and the trick skiing and everything like that, uh, then you're in something else entirely. This is a friend of hers, Sonia Daniels, who also happens to be from Greenville, and she's showing the position, the takeoff position, where you're in the water with your chin up, your knees together, your arms straight, and she's going to show how, when the pressure, when the boat pulls on the rope, the position you come up into to ski. And this is a very popular sport uh, all over the country. 
as you know, if you spend any time on the lakes at all, you see water skiers out there. Life belts, of course. For safety, you should always have one on when you water ski. Now, this is Parker Overton. This film was shot the next day. I went back out there. The wind was too tough uh, for the other stuff that we wanted to do, and particularly the, the trick skiing and the jumping. So I went back out the next day, and Parker was able to come out. He came out from the store, and he's going to drive the boat, and Becky's going to do the watching. You should always, when you water ski, and have, in addition to a driver in there, you should have somebody. And this is typically what you see when you first start off. You can expect to get wet. I don't think anybody ever got up on a pair of water skis the first time. If you say that you have done it and never fallen, I'm a little bit skeptical. But Christy's alongside over there and instructing her how to do it. And after a while, you get the feel of it. The, the tough part is feeling the water pressure when you first are pulled up. You've got all that water streaming right in your face, right across your body and your legs. And you've got to get up and maintain a position so that you've got balance. And later, you go into the other trick stuff. Now, trick skiing, uh, in competition, you make two passes before the judges. There are five judges up there, and you make two passes before the judges. And you get 20 seconds each pass. You get a total of 20 seconds to do all the tricks you're going to do. Now, here they are. The girls are just coming in. And Sonia, of course, is a very good actress. She was faking all that. She is herself a very good water skier. But I said, I need some demonstration. But here's the trick skiing now. And you get 20 seconds to do all of this, and you're judged on form, on how you cross back and forth the wake, of the complexity of the tricks, what you want to do. But it's like ice skating. It's, it's like uh, this ice skating competition that you see at the Olympics, or uh, figure skating. This is very similar to it, except the water is not frozen hard. It's uh, more or less soft. However, uh, it can be real hard if you hit going sure enough fast. Water can get pretty hard sometimes. That was a double 360 degree turn she did there, what's called a 720. But this is what she competes in when she goes to Australia and England, and she has been there recently. She just got back from England uh, in international ski competition. And about a month ago, she went to Australia but she's a professional athlete. Now, she's competing for prize money. This is not an amateur kind of a sport. And this is the one that gets me. This is, this is the ski jumping. And you'll notice she's got a crash helmet on and a wetsuit uh, that's padded. But when you come off the turn, when you swing out like this, and then when you come across the wake, the boat's doing about 34, 35 miles an hour. You're doing somewhere in the neighborhood of 60. And here she goes. And this has got to be a kick. I mean, this, that's got to be uh, a great deal of fun. But it takes a lot of coordination and timing in order to do it. And I've got another view of it here. Here we're going to come another time jumping. But uh, this is uh, the view that I like. And if you want to see what it looks like to her, this is what she sees coming at her. And when she crosses, that's what it looks like when you go over. Christy Overton, uh, an amazing young lady. Uh, she, as I say, she's a professional. She endorses Correct Craft boats, uh, ski warm wetsuits, Connolly skis, and of course Overton's. Uh, but uh, she is a professional amateur. She is 15 years old. I'll be back here in a minute with a final word after this. In my hometown of Greenville, North Carolina, there's a place called Overton's. Overton's is the world's largest water sports dealer, and this is their 1985 discount catalog. Anything and everything that the boater will need is in this book. Whether it's water skis or life vests, fishing tackles, shotguns, or crossbows, Overton's in Greenville has it at discount prices. Call them today toll free for your new free catalog or stop by when you're in Greenville. The prices and selections are super. Tell them Frank sent you.
Did you say 30 minutes of Binny Hill wasn't enough? Well, the Binny Hill show is now the Binny Hill Hour. That means double the antics and double the laughs. <laughs> The Binny Hill Hour, Saturday night, 11 o'clock on Channel 19. Hot town, summer in the city, back of my neck getting dirty and gritty. Been down, isn't it a pity? I mean, he's gonna know you're a fake. You don't know the first thing about Arab culture. Are you kidding? Don't you remember I used to date that belly dancer for about six months? So what you learn? <laughs> Hello, I'm Donna Bundrick on WOTX. Utilization and imagination are the keys when it comes to South Carolina watermelons. Fresh and juicy South Carolina watermelons offer a wide array of versatility to any creative consumer. Try them in desserts or as a bow for your favorite beverage. Simply scoop the melon out, blend with your ingredients, and serve directly from the decorative rind. When purchasing watermelons, select those with a smooth surface, rounded ends, and a rind with a dullish sheen. A consumer message from your South Carolina Department of Agriculture. If the guys up in Delaware Bay say that three and four pound trout are little ones, then I'm off for the big ones. As soon as they turn the lights off here, I'm headed back up on the eastern shore, and I'm gonna to try to find some of those nine and 10 and 12, and even maybe luckily 14 or 15 pound gray trout. And if I do find those, uh, we'll have it here on the show in a very short time. Until then, please do not litter and do yourself a favor. Take a kid fishing. The Southern Sportsman has been brought to you in part by House Autry Cornmeal and Flour Products. By Happy Jack, manufacturer of the all-new 3X Flea Collar. By the Southern Sportsman.